Hi there, welcome to Bitbee. My name is Tirupati Rao, author of Bitbee. This is the continuation of our sorting algorithm series and today we are going to explore about quick sort. So as of now, already we have covered about bubble sort, selection sort and insertion sort algorithms in this series along with their time complexity analysis. You can find the link in the info section for the playlist of the sorting algorithm series. I also mentioned the same in this video description. Before deep diving, please subscribe to the channel if you are not yet subscribed. Also, please share the channel with your friends. Thank you very much and appreciating your support. So basically, Quicksort works on divide and conquer strategy, which means this algorithm divides the given unsorted array recursively, then it sorts the every unsorted fragment among them, and finally it combines all the sorted fragments and gives the result, that is one final sorted array. Because of this divide and conquer strategy, Quicksort has time complexity of n log n. We will explore that in a while. Now let's explore the complete steps of the algorithm with the given unsorted array here. To divide the array first, choose a pivot element from the given array and then make a partition around the pivot element on the array. Remember you can choose the pivot element anywhere from the array that is at the start, at the end or in the middle. There is no restriction for that. Then the next important step is recursively sort the partitions on both sides of the pivot element. And in the final step, combine all the sorted partitions to give the sorted array. Now let's try to visualize the algorithm with one more example. Here I have taken an array with six different elements and choosing last element 40 as pivot element. And taking two more variables i and j, where j points to the first element of the array and initializing i with minus 1 which means it's not pointing to any element initially. We use the jth element to compare against the pivot element. If the jth element is greater than pivot, we will keep moving the j by incrementing it by 1. Else if jth element is less than pivot, then we increment and move the ith index and we will swap the elements at j and i. Here in this example, 90 is greater than 40, hence we will move only the j. And for the next comparison, 30 is less than 40. So we will increment the i, so it will point to 0. Then we swap the elements at i and j. And this iteration will continues and next we will move the j. So it will point to 60. Now 60 is greater than 40 and we will increment the j again. Now j will point to 10. Since again 10 is less than 40, we will increment i. And then we will swap i and j that is 90 and 10. And we continue the iteration. Here j is 90. Since 90 is greater than 40, we will move j. Now j points to 70 and 70 is greater than 40. So we will move j. Now j moved to 40 which is equal to pivot element. Here we need to stop our iteration. When j is equal to pivot, we need to swap the pivot element with the element at i plus 1. So here 40 will move to second index. This is the important phase. If you see here after first set of operations or in the first recursive call, the pivot came to the middle and all the elements lesser than pivot came to left and the remaining elements that is greater than the pivot all are moved to the right. Now independently for both the partitions, the process of choosing the pivot element and sorting the elements around the pivot element will continue until every partition array size reaches to 1. So continue this process on these partitions. Again quick sort will call on the left side and right side. Then choosing pivot from the partition and initializing i and j. Now 30 is greater than the pivot element 10. So j will be moved. Now j is equal to pivot. Since j reaches pivot, we will increment i. Now i will point to 30, then we will swap i and j. Now again the same process for the right side partition or right sub array. Element j 90 is greater than 60, so we will move j. Again 70 is greater than 60, again we will move j. Now j reaches to pivot, so we will move i to the first element and we will swap i and j. So these recursive steps still continue with the same process. Here I am not showing all the remaining quick sort recursive steps as they are same. So after completing all the recursions with quick sort on all the partitions, we need to combine those partitions to get the resultant array, which is an expected and sorted array. So now let's code the algorithm quickly. We will start with the Java code. We'll code the first method that is quick sort method. So let's write the quick sort method taking three arguments array, low and high index. And for the given array, we need to get the pivot index from where we can make a partition. And to this partition method, again, I will send the same arguments that is array, low and high indexes. 
then once the pivot element is decided we need to make the quick sort for left and right partitions around the pivot and for these recursive calls we will not pass the pivot element now let's code the partition method it is receiving three arguments that is full array or partition array low and high indexes then i am taking end or the last element as the pivot element initializing i with low minus 1 and j will start from low so as we discussed earlier inside the loop i'm comparing the jth element with the pivot if that is less than the pivot incrementing the i then i'm taking a temporary variable help and i'm swapping the i and jth elements then outside the loop when j reaches to pivot i'm taking one more temporary variable and swapping the pivot and ith element so that's pretty simple now let's write the driver code for this that is main method inside main method i'm taking one unsorted array then calling quick sort method on it by passing the array first index and the last index and here we go with the python code for the same step one quick sort method step two the partition method i will mention the github link for the same code for java and python in the description now let's quickly explore the time complexity of the quick sort algorithm So if we take an array of size n, for each recursive call we keep dividing the array into two parts. So those array partition size will be n by 2, n by 2, then n by 4, then n by 8 and so on until n by k, right? For the time complexity analysis, we can just ignore that one element that is pivot element for the each partition. So we are performing the same operations k times and each operation we are dividing the array. hence. The time complexity of this process is log n and the overall process will be k into log n times. In general, we can make it as n log n, right? I will make a separate video how we are getting that log n by dividing the array into halves recursively. So if we plot a graph for n log n, that is input size against the time, the yellow line gives us the n log n, whereas the red line denoting the quadratic time complexity that is n square and this time complexity n square we already observed for the bubble sort, selection sort and the insertion sort. So if you compare both the time complexities, the time complexity of the quick sort algorithm is better than the bubble sort, selection sort and the insertion sort algorithms. There is one worst case where this quick sort time complexity can go to n square if the array is already sorted and if we are choosing the pivot as the largest or smallest element from the array. That is all about the quick sort algorithm. Hope this is useful for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video and don't forget to subscribe to Bitbee. Thank you.